Hey there, welcome to another collab video between myself and the lovely Leslie Logan of Profitable Pilates. Um, this is our sixth collaborative video, I believe, and today we're going to look at the series, the stomach massage series on the reformer. And this is one that I know people have very mixed feelings about. People either love it or hate it. And it's such a meat and potatoes series. I'm really excited to be uh, doing a tutorial on the stomach massage series. Uh, I have done one on Pilatesology, which well, I will conclude the link in the description box below. And we'll touch on a little bit of uh, what I talked about in that Pilatesology video, which is how to keep your pants on in the stomach massage. This may be a big concern of yours. I know it was for me for many years and um, we're gonna talk about that as well. But first things first, let's look at what we're talking about. Stomach massage series. I have a Graz reformer. I have my foot bar up. All of my springs are on, so I have four springs on. My headpiece is up, and I'm gonna place one of these pads kind of in the center of the mat, um, so just for some traction. And I usually try to get rid of as many sort of what I consider to be superfluous pads in the workout. Um, I live in California, so I work out barefoot, and I just feel like I can um, just relate and take support from the apparatus so much better barefoot. Um, there are pad positions if you wear socks in your studio, and they're very good for security. Um, but this pad is, is especially good because initially when you learn this series, Often the leg muscles are very strong on a lot of people, myself included, and often it's easy to just kind of push out in this exercise with your legs. And at first, if you do that, it's gonna push you backward on the mat. And that's why this pad is great because it's gonna help you keep your spot on the mat until you can figure out how to push with your center and not with your legs. More on that later, but we're just gonna talk about what we're talking about. I know I keep saying that, but I'm actually gonna do the exercise. So four springs. Stomach massage has essentially four parts um, and perhaps an embellishment. So let's talk about that. So my feet are heels together and toes apart. I'm sitting up really tall and lifted and I'm holding onto the mat. This is part one, which you'll do ultimately 10 times. And then I'm gonna take a spring off. This is part two. And this is usually the part where if your pants are gonna come off, this is where they start, it starts happening. And then I'm gonna take another spring off. So I went to three and now I'm at two. And now I don't get to hold on, I'm sitting up tall and I'm trying to lift my low back like it's trying to reach all the way out my fingertips. So this is part three, let's call it. And then if you add your twist, let's call that part four. And then we'll talk about the embellishment in a moment. So in the stomach massage, when you learn it, you'll do part one. So the first position, oh, pad problems, pad problems. Okay, <laughs> so position one, which is lifted in the low back and curled in the upper back, in the middle and upper back. And you're gonna go out and in, and I don't have the right springs, so that was weird. Let's try that again. Okay, so part one, you're gonna ultimately do it 10 times. On three springs, you're gonna do part two 10 times. On two springs, you're gonna do part three Initially, 10 times, when you add your twist, you're gonna cut it down to, let's say four like this, and then three sets of twist. So four plus three sets is six, four plus six is 10. So it's essentially 10, 10, and 10. And this should really move like gangbusters, and it's really kind of a, a nice series to flow through. So now let's talk about some pitfalls. Don't feel like you have to sit all the way close to the edge of the carriage. In our training programs, perhaps you learned like I did that if you're advanced, and we can debate what that means at a later date, if you're advanced, you're gonna sit right on the edge of the carriage. 
And while that may be true as a goal, perhaps it's not today's goal. So if I sit way over here, yes, I'm using my stomach, but I'm already, some people would be already back here. And you want to make it so that they can sit in a place where they can really feel that they can lift their low back really high up. And so for some people, that may be way back here. So you'll see some people that when they push out, they're already are like way back here. And you want to make sure that where you sit them doesn't disable them from lifting themselves up and forward, even though they're pushing into the bar. So my suggestion for the pad placement would to be to put it kind of in the center of the carriage as a, as a guide, and then direct the person to sit kind of in the center of the pad or a little bit forward so that they still are clearly behind their tailbone and they have to kind of work to sit up, but they have kind of a fighting chance to feel what that lift feels like. So now going on to number two. For number two, I'm just gonna get the right springs on. So for number two, you have a few options for where to put your hands, depending on what kind of back and shoulders you have. So the ultimate, fingers facing away, Sorry, distracted by hair on my foot. Fingers facing away and trying to lift yourself up tall to open your chest and your shoulders. This is a place where a lot of us cultivate a squish of the shoulders, where we kind of jam our upper back together, our ribs fly out, and this gets all kind of just crammed together. So if possible, you wanna feel like you're, you're connecting this part of your hand not to your arm that holds you up, but to your back, your low back that can lift up by your gentle pressure on the hand, on the shoulder rest. So you're not holding yourself up with your arm, but you're using the pushing down to help you lift up. So that is the ultimate. And I feel a very nice stretch across my shoulders. I'm kind of tight there. For some people, this might be too much. One step back is to put the fingers facing forward. Their shoulder gets a little less stretched. They can still take the same kind of support and lift from their back, and they'll still probably get a stretch across their shoulders. This may be still too much for certain kinds of shoulders and backs. So this is another option where your fists are pushing down so you can still lift your back, even though you're not on top of the shoulder rest. And again, you're gonna Tell them not to hold themselves up with their arms, but to keep the lift. Okay, so let's go. So this is number two. And then after 10 of those, one spring off again. Now you have to lift your low back up without holding on. And then you'll take your twist. And that just all stays on two springs. Okay, so now let's talk about some nuts and bolts. This is a long series. A lot of people find this exercise very uncomfortable because they're very stiff and for them to get to fold their body up and lift their back is just a, a skill that they need to work on. It's a very difficult skill for them. So, if you have someone who's very stiff, very, you know, works in the hip flexors, works in the quads and the shoulders, when they do this exercise, it probably will look bad, but as long as they're not in pain, they should continue to do it because it will get better. They might have to sit far away. And usually even the very tall and the very stiff, if they sit back far enough, will be fine. Um, so again, it's a long series. And so 10 of one, 10 of the second, 10 of the third, or even the third plus twist, for people that are very much in their hip flexors and their legs, that's a lot of work that happens there. So by the end of the series, they may be feeling it there quite a little bit. 
And so this is a series where you'll work to find the back of the body and the seat, which will help it not be like a hip exercise. And you'll also be working on that same stuff around the studio with that kind of person as well. So cultivating the bottom and the back of the leg and the lift of the stomach. If you can think about that, it's going to lift this up and out of the hips and reach the low back down. So this whole area from here to here gets really decompressed and really opened. And so that is the goal of the stomach massage series to get that openness and that decompression out of that kind of what seems to be sort of a compressed position. And you're really using the spring to help you get the lift because the spring's very nature and the reformer's nature is to compress us to the point where we have to, we have no other choice but to lift. So let's talk about ways to get out of the hip flexors and use your bottom in this series. I'm going to put the springs on again. And you know, there's lots of uh, nuances and uh, elements to the stomach massage series that we could talk about. If there are questions that you have or things that I don't talk about in this video, please leave me a comment below. I'm happy to address them in a comment response or also in another video. Thank you. Okay, so back to number one. I'm gonna lift my back up and I'm gonna make sure that all of the balls of my foot, <laughs> that sounds weird, so not only the ball of the big toe, but the balls of each all of the toes. You want to make sure that that has contact with the bar. A lot of times the toes are going to want to grab on and kind of help you pull the carriage in. And just know that your toes pulling the carriage in is really just your hip, leg, and your thigh working too much. So as much as you can, you want to try to push the balls of the feet into the bar and your toes mine are kind of like jumping up in the air you really just want them to chill out and that's a hard thing to ask of toes sometimes <laughs> so you want to feel like if you lift your heels and press them together you get kind of a sense that something is going on in your bottom even if it's not very much <laughs> and so you're going to straighten your legs you're going to push on the bar in every moment so as you come in you want to feel like you push the bar away and you use that pressure and resistance to lift your back up ever taller so that your waistline and your bottom are working to close the spring let's do that again push and that's really why i like to start this series with all the springs on because i have a really sinky back and it's hard for me to make this lifted tall position and all of the springs resisting my lift is really helping me to support this position in my back. So you'll do the same kind of thing for the second one. And remember, this is the point where the pants want to come off. So if you can find your bottom and you're pushing with this and this instead of your legs, it's going to really help you keep your spot. And even if you have to resist the carriage so much that you hold it out there and that's the way you feel your bottom, that's okay. Push it away, make it stop, lift yourself. Even if you have to stop it a lot, it's okay. And I know I said that this series should move like gangbusters, but until you feel like all the connections are there, you can slow it down to be precise. It's always a little bit of a war between precision and pace. And then this one, this is the really where all the hard work comes in. So you're going to push, you're going to lift your back. And at a certain point, I feel like, you know, this can't push anymore. And I feel like, oh, it goes away, like, oh, right, just as the carriage is closing. And so try to hang on to it. And you want to set up this part, this part that's getting you in, like it's a machine. So when you start that twist, You've got that lower body all dialed in. It knows what to do. So you can be fancy on the top. Speaking of fancy, now let's talk about our embellishment. So presuming that your butt is still pushing on the carriage or on the bar, so you're not in your hips, you're going to reach your arms in front of you, push your feet into the bar, lift your seat, and circle. And you want these circles to come from way down in here. You just do a few and then a few in the other direction. 
keep pushing into the bar, keep using your butt, lift yourself super tall, reach out to the side, three circles, lifting your back, the casual observer will think nothing's going on, but this is a lot of work, lift up your arms, lift up your back, take your feet off without your hands, so that's your little embellishment, and for people that have a really sinky back, like myself, <laughs> um, it's a really good thing to do, it's really hard to do, and it's really helpful. So, if you have any other questions on the stomach massage, I think I covered all the things I wanted to talk about today. Oh, we didn't talk about how to keep your pants on. Well, we did, but I don't think I was very clear. So, the more you can find your seat and your center as you're pushing on the bar, that's what's going to keep your pants on. Because if you push with your legs, your pants will, you'll push yourself right outside of your pants. Um, and in every Pilates studio, there's always a mirror waiting behind you if when your pants fall off. If you'd like to see other videos featured in a collaboration, other exercises, please leave me a comment below. Let us know and we would be happy to make uh, a video together. It's really fun to see how many different things we can say about the same exercise. Um, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, become a subscriber and you'll never miss a video. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you again soon. Thank you so much. Bye. You're going to stand with your heels together and your toes apart, you know, in that position, but the circle is in the middle. And already stand so your feet are close enough that the circle is like an oval because you're going to want to hang on to it. In a moment, we're going to just take one foot at a time off the floor. So your arms are out to the side. If you need help balancing, you can start.